All right, so welcome back to Digital Asset News. Today, instead of talking about the news per se, I wanna bring somebody in who can kind of give us a little bit better information as to what is going on behind the scenes as far as crypto and digital assets. And we've been talking about this for, for a little bit of time now, but I know that we're interested in the top 20, 50, and 100 as far as crypto, but I think there's a bigger play lurking in the background. And that's why I got my man, Crypto Stash, to come in and take some time and try to break it down for me and everybody watching the video. So uh, Crypto Stash, Shay, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Yeah, Rob, no problem, man. Uh, happy to be here hanging out with you and and uh, all the all the followers and, and fans out there. Uh, you know, I, I think that you're right. And, you know, me as as also a big picture type of guy, and I love, you know, the, uh, you know, coins are in the top 50, top 10, top 25. Um, right. You know, that that's where I got started. I mean, that's what I, I've, I've been, you know, holding for years. So, you know, I think that those are really important, but I think it's also important to to understand, you know, where we're going in the future, what the big picture is, you know, because Bitcoin was a big picture thing as well. Uh, just, you know, five, six years ago, many people yeah. couldn't see that picture, you know, and even now there's a lot of people that can't see that picture. And so, you know, just as far as where I've been and what I've done and kind of who I am, and where I came from. You know, that that's kind of what I saw in 2012, 2013 when I first got into Bitcoin is I've always been a tech guy. Um, I've always, you know, used and worked on in computers. It's something I was kind of uh, just took an affinity to when I was about uh, 12. You know, I started building my own computers around that time. Uh, oh, started nice. jumping, yeah, yeah. Do, doing things really early on with computers. And it just has always been something I've just had a knack for. And so. Uh, you know, being involved in technology uh, since since that age, you know, I learned how to code uh, self-taught at 16 was coding nice. websites at that point. Yeah. So, I mean, I saw the early age of the Internet as well. I was getting on, you know, pre AOL days before, you know, most of America was online. <laughs> and, <laughs> AOL days. Oh, yeah. man, that was, that was way long ago. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So, you know, and, and at that point, too. You know, people are like, oh, the Internet's a fat. Like, what is the Internet? That is just for scammers and, you know, for terrorists and for people who are going to con you out of money. And, you know, and then, then people started getting online and, yeah. you know, people are talking. There's there's chatting. There's you can get access news. And then, you know, people were like trying to starting to dabble with selling things online. And people were like, what? Selling things online? No, that's a scam. People are just going to scam you and steal your money. That's never mm -hmm. going to work. And then it worked, you know, and then we, we just keep seeing the same thing happen over and over again. So, you know, when I found Bitcoin, I just kind of jumped on and I, I read that white paper and I was like, boom, this is a huge idea. This is going to change the face of, of, of our financial industries globally. And it's going to change the face, the entire face of the Internet. Like everything that is, is digital is going to be this. And so yeah. I saw that vision uh, back then. And, you know, I've just kind of plugged away at it you know for a while there i i, I just kind of hollowed but um in 2016 that's when i started to really try and educate people and i started with bitcoin you know educating people about bitcoin yep and you know what i i, I think it's it's something to, to play out to talk about in the old days everything was a scam and nothing made sense there's no reason for anybody to invest into dot coms because they're like i can just create a, a website and social media i can create a facebook it doesn't seem that hard and then and it's the same thing now i can create an nft i can create a, a, a cryptocurrency i can create a and it just goes on and on and on so the big thing is just trying to grasp it i gotta be honest with you even me like my son he came to me in 2012 and goes hey I got a I got a, a guy at school who wants to sell me 500 Bitcoin for $500. I said, Alan, that is that is ridiculous. That makes no sense. And he tried to explain it to me. And now look where I would have been. But it just takes a little time. So yeah. some people like myself who are who is dense, uh, it takes a little bit more time. Uh, uh, Shay here, he gets a little bit more as far as uh, understanding. And I think it kind of comes. The reason why we're here talking about this today is because of this this phrase right here, which is. Fortunes are made by buying low and selling too soon. This is from Baron Rothschild. And basically yeah. it goes like this. Get into something quick and early now, and then it will may become the big thing. So that takes care of the who is crypto stash. So it makes a lot of sense, right? So let's talk about the next part is stash. I know you're big on play to earn games. So, yeah, so break it down for us as, as far as like, like, First of all, where did this all come in, into play? How did you find it? And what are the things that you're looking for right now as far as to invest into play to earn games? Yeah. 
So, you know, play to earn is very much similar to um, a concept we've seen with Bitcoin, you know, and that's why I've kind of latched onto it is where, you know, Bitcoin was kind of mm -hmm. the jump off point for, you know, Web 3.0 and uh, a financial revolution, you know, a paradigm shift, a fundamental paradigm shift in our financial industry. Uh, you know, uh, you know, what we're what we're seeing now with uh, NFTs, gaming, play to earn is another shift as well. And a shift that is 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 moving towards where our economy in general is moving towards um, just to kind of set all this up. And I'm going to tell you exactly why it's super important. But you have to have some of this this background knowledge. And, and these are the things that I think a lot of people tend to kind of, you know, not take in consideration. And until they hear them, these are the convincing arguments. So, you know, right now we are already seeing, uh, you know, our economies globally. Uh, having issues, you know, due to things like COVID and our economy and, inf and inflation, right? They're running rampant. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, then you look at the job markets. Job markets globally are not, you know, looking that good. We're seeing more and more automation coming into play, which is taking people's jobs mm -hmm. away. That's not going to stop. If people think like, oh, yeah, no, it's, it's only going to get better. And like, no, automation is only going to be more prevalent. <laughs> and that means less and less jobs out there for people. Right. And so but but what we're what we're seeing here is we're seeing a shift really or, or the ability to shift into jobs being more of a digital nature. Right. Already, lots of right. people already work within the computer space. But uh, when I talk about digital nature, I'm talking about uh, in things like metaverses, in things like gaming. Right. Gaming has become the largest sport in the world. If you want to if some people don't consider it a sport, but esports is watched by more people than people watching football, soccer uh, and basketball combined here in, in the United States. Most people don't understand or even know that is going on underneath their nose. When you look at that and you look at the next generation, you know, that, that is that is coming up here and they're looking for jobs, they're going to start looking more and more towards these metaverses, towards gaming as a career, towards doing some sort of job in a digital environment that is creating value. And so Bitcoin kind of laid the tracks for that. And now with programmable money and being able to, you know, build uh, dApps, you know, uh, applications on top of things like Ethereum or other, you know, Solana or other top coins that you guys have probably heard of, uh, you know, we have that ability now to create these environments where, you know, it can sustain whole economies. We've seen we've seen Axie Infinity reach, you know, over a million players, and there are thousands and thousands of people in the Philippines. Who are making more daily playing Axie Infinity than they would in a, a medium-paying job in their country? That is their work now, right? I mean, I mean, when I say thousands, actually, it's more of like hundreds of thousands at this point. And, and so, you know, th this is just the beginning of that. So, when you say, "Well, why is play to earn important? Why are NFTs important? Why is gaming important?" Well, that is why. You know, we're we're moving more towards this digitally focused economy. And what we're doing in blockchain is really just getting those things started. And so as automation starts to take over, there's less and less physical jobs for people to do. People are going to find more ways to make money online. Uh, they've been doing it for a while now, but we're starting to see more and more ways for the average person to do it. It's not just for superstars who are, you know, the top gamers of the world that are making tons of money. Yeah. Everybody can jump in and start doing it now. And crypto makes that possible. So playing to earn is the concept of, being able to play a game and earn some sort of value for the time that you're putting into it. And that, you know, may range from earning uh, actual in-game cryptocurrency or earning mm -hmm. NFTs, which you could then sell in a marketplace for Ethereum or Solana or whatever it may be. And, you know, cash out from there if you want. I don't know why you cash out to USD, but uh, <laughs> well, you could, you know, you could, or, or you just hold it in, in you know, a stable coin or something if you like. So, so I think that's sure. the real reason why P2E. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so here's the thing. So here's my question for you. Like, cause you, I, I watch your channel. You play a lot of different games. There's a, there's a huge plethora of different games that you're actually into. What are the ones that, that really drive you to play those games and then to actually get an earnings uh, back? What are like one of the ones that you get into that pay you the most essentially and the ones that you enjoy the most? So that's, those, those are two incredibly different questions. So, right. uh, but I mean, that's, those are questions <laughs> that, that is true. Asked. Yeah. I get asked all the time and, huh? and there's a, there's a pretty stark division there. So there are games that, that are uh, crypto based, they're blockchain and NFT based that I love playing because they're fun games. Right. Uh, you can also earn in them. And then there's games that you play that like, I, I don't like this game as much, but you, the earning is good, you know? And, and so I think that that's kind of where we're at right now is that there's a lot of games that uh, are, are out there 
where there's good earning potential, but the game itself isn't that fun because we're very early in this development cycle of play to earn and NFT, you know, blockchain based games. Uh, yeah. So there's a lot of projects that are in the works that are going to be AAA, really amazing experiences, but there's not as 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 many as you would you know hope for. I mean, in, in comparison to traditional gaming, right? So yeah, so that's that division. Uh, the games that I love playing, that I really just enjoy, uh, mm -hmm. my tops are uh, Gods Unchained, Splinterlands, okay. uh, Blanco's Block Party, a lot of fun. Um, uh, I've been having a lot of fun playing Spider Tanks from Gala Games. Also, okay. uh, some up and comers like uh, War Riders is really fun too. These are these are all play to earn games where you know it's either free to start playing the game or it costs very minimal to get started, and you can earn in those games. Now, are you earning fifty, hundred, something dollars? A no, you know, but you can earn a couple bucks a day, and if you get lucky on some of these games too, where you get a rare drop or you know find a rare thing in, in the game or a rare card, uh, you could be making thousands of dollars a day. I mean, some of these cards are going for ten, fifty, you know, a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. And you know what? I, I think when I hear these stories, I think to myself, what was it like to be mining Bitcoin back in 2010, 2011? People are like, ah, they're just little trinkets, but I'll keep them around right. for, for giggles. I have a thousand Bitcoin and whatever else. I think it's the same thing, right? Maybe in yeah. four or five years, we're like, wow, all those games that I played. Now here we are. And I mean, just think about for you watching at home, think of all the different games that you play online where, you know, you log in, you may, you may pay, you may not pay, it may be free, but I know that they're, they're taking your data. Imagine being able to play those games and get something in return that you can hold on to that maybe in three, four, or five years is actual an asset and will actually appreciate. Those are the big things. That, that's, yeah. just, that's just my two cents right there. No, and you're right. And that's another element of this whole play to earn economy is, you know, for those who are maybe not gamers, maybe you guys out there are not big gamers and that's fine. Mm -hmm. But understand that there are billions of gamers out there and these people are spending over almost half a trillion dollars per year on gaming related items. Either whether that's the game, that's buying in-game skins, trading yeah. them on the market, you know, things like that. So the, it's, a, it's a big, massive economy that if you're not kind of, if that's not your thing, you know, then you may not really know what's going on there. And so that money is moving around there. And, you know, right now in traditional gaming, you, you can't take it with you. You don't actually own it. You're just renting it. But blockchain and NFTs allow you to actually own those things and then trade them freely. Like if you're done with a game, like, hey, I'm done with Fortnite. I'm just overplaying it. I spent $10,000 on skins. What can I do with them now? Well, you can't. You can't do anything with those. But but that's what these NFT games uh, really allow you to do is you could then sell them if you're done and, and make some profit back. And unbelievable, right? So you know what? So that before we before we go on, there's a couple of things I want to I want to make mention of. First of all, uh, you can find Crypto Stash on his YouTube channel. There's crypto. I mean, you cannot miss it. You cannot miss it. it is right there. And uh, also, if you take a look at uh, the description. Of every one of my videos, I think it's, uh, let me pull this one up. No, no, no. Ba, ba, ba. This one here. Uh, if you go in the description, every one of my videos, every single one, I've got my YouTube channel recommendations. Everything from Alex, Coin Bureau, Invest Answers. And then the last one right there, Crypto Stash is right there. So if you can't, for some reason, spell Thanks. Crypto Stash, it's right there. So you can check that out. It's, and it's then also, like the mustache, S-T-A-C-H-E. <laughs> it's so simple, right? And then also the things that, 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 Stash was talking about right there as far as like getting into, well, if you're not a gamer, maybe there's another play that you can get into. This might be somebody, something for somebody else. Like if you go to like a coin gecko, click on categories, and then just go down to where are we at? Gaming, meme tokens, non-fungible tokens. That would probably be a good one. Yeah. You know, Axie Infinity, Theta, Decentraland, Engine Coin, those types of things. And I think they even have, have a gaming category itself. So just take a look at those areas, and that might be something that might more interest you than just uh, sitting around and playing. My, me personally, Stash, I'm going to start to get my kids on it, just have them, like, I'm going to farm them out and play all the games, and I go, okay, what'd you get for dad? And that's about yeah. it. <laughs> Load up our bags. Load up our bags, kids. <laughs> yeah. So that was no, Go I was going to say, you just make a really good point there. You know, not everyone is a gamer, but that doesn't mean you can't get a little piece of, of the action with uh, the underlying tokens like you were showing. Yeah, it's and it's all about getting in now. The time that it kind of goes mainstream, you're pretty much too late, you know, to really get those monstrous gains. And we all, we all know about Bitcoin, Ethereum, and everything else. The, that herd is coming. And right behind that herd is another herd of people getting into the gaming, the NFT, and the metaverse. Mm -hmm. which stash leads me to uh, my next point that we're talking about why the metaverse. Yeah. So this is something that I uh, tried to cover 
in one of my last videos where we talked about just now or never. I talked about this was like the 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 least positively reviewed video I've ever done because people are like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Yeah. So Stash, do me a favor. Try to break this down in simpler terms than I did of why the metaverse could potentially be huge. Yeah, I mean, I, these concepts are, are you know, not the easiest things to wrap your head around because there's so many yeah. moving parts to them, you know, and I think that's kind of how Bitcoin is for a lot of people as well until they get it. There's something there's something that happens, right? There's something that someone says to them, a video they watch, a concept that like makes it click in their head. Uh, that, and then they're like, oh, now I get it. Dang, that, yeah, I can't believe all this time. And then they kind of look back and like, oh, it was silly that I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't believing in this or it, when it wasn't. I, I wasn't. I didn't have the right information to grasp that concept. But I mean, why metaverses and why they're important and why they're going to be a big part of our future? I kind of already touched on. Uh, it, when it comes down to where we're going with our economy, more and more jobs moving online into a digital, uh, you know, uh, something, a digital, way, and and, the, and that something is essentially collectively called the metaverse. So when when you're talking about uh, you know, people playing and earning in these games or, you know, whatever it may be, you know, these yeah. things are, are the early stages of, of, of this kind of commingling of, of different digital lifestyles and digital hubs where people are going and they're, they're either doing social activities or they're selling things, marketplaces, things like that. Uh, and, and so, you know, we're just seeing the beginning of that. You know, we're seeing the beginning of a Ready Player One style world where everyone is connected to these metaverses and all the metaverses are connected to each other. And that's where commerce is happening. That's where social is happening. That's where you're doing your conferences. That's where you're, you're, uh, you know, meeting uh, people for, uh, you know, for some doing something after work. That's where you're meeting up all with, with all of your friends and the younger generation is already doing this all the time. So, you know, I, it's a little bit of a harder concept, I think for, for a little bit of an older generation yeah. to, to grasp on because it's just not something they've grown up with. But, you know, you got to think about this, that. This is very true. No, it's true. Uh, yeah. I mean, and, and so, so, you know, you got to think about that. That fact is that, you know, whereas, you know, we haven't grown up with this, you know, our kids are, you know, our kids are in these things. They're, they they want to play them for multiple hours a day. That's where all their friends are at. They're in Roblox. They're playing Minecraft. They're meeting up together. They're building things. They're hanging out. Uh, you know, they're maybe, you know, depending on what edge they're, they may be doing some sort of commerce or earning something in that game too. So, you know, uh, I think that when you see this play for like why metaverses, well, because once again, it comes back to the fact that we're really, our economy is moving into more of a digital global format. And with, you know, things like automation, uh, you know, less and less people having an action you know, or, or, or being incentivized to have, a, you know, a job like this, having a gamified job where you're going in and doing something that is, you know, uh, digital of nature, you can do right from your home. You know, we've already, we've already been pushed to that. We've been pushed to that with uh, everything happening here with COVID. Everyone has all these these uh, businesses have had to restructure things and reformat their business to be able to accommodate people working from home. That is one of the first steps in pushing people into this. And so whether or not it was a purposeful thing or it was an accidental thing, uh, the fact of the matter is, is that we have had to do that globally. And that is one of the driving factors and one of the kickoff you know, events for going more digital, for having more automation, right? Because there's yeah. less people that are maybe maybe people are afraid to go out and go get a job at, at, at a place where you know maybe it can just be automated at this point. So yeah, I mean, right. I think that, that's why the metaverse is is becoming so popular and, and is an important concept as as a whole. You know, a place where people can go digitally to interact on every different level, whether that's commerce, social, work, whatever it may be. Yeah, and I got to tell you, like I've I've got friends in the uh, uh, commercial real estate industry, and they they took a huge hit because I mean, look at I mean, the commercial real estate is is not on death's door, but it, it went down. It took a huge hit with, with COVID. So now yeah. you have the ability, and that's why, of course, if you own stock in Zoom two years ago, you're rich right now because Zoom took over a lot of things. And the right. next evolution past that is like just like you talked about to actually interact. Have you ever had been in a Zoom meeting with like more than ten people? It's awful. It sucks. You yeah. can't really like interact like you should. You can't really talk. It's always one person. But now if you go into the metaverse and again, going the metaverse, buying land, selling that land, reselling, creating NFTs, ad space, uh, having commerce, also having uh, industries come in and have like conferences. I mean, that I think is the new way to do things. And I've the video that we talked about yesterday, we do a lot of just real estate for short term rentals, Airbnb, Verbo, yeah. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Now I'm getting into the the 
the non-physical land to purchase into because I think as time goes on, it'll be a pretty darn big play. And I think just yeah. like what you said, even Mr. Wonderful, Kevin O'Leary, he talks about how because of COVID, it accelerated his business practice by five to 10 years by taking everything from the uh, commercial side, physical, to mm -hmm. put it online. And the people yeah. that he said, Bruce, there was three jobs that that he recommended people get into, engineering, engineering, engineering. And after this, he said, it'll be art, creative, and yep. the people that actually, you know, do things, uh, that actually do things online. So this is, I agree with you wholeheartedly. It's just time, it's just wrapping your head around why, why is that? So that helps tremendously. Thanks, Dash. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so like I said, it's it kind of a combination of a, a couple of different elements there. And, you know, COVID has really accelerated that with having to push people in that direction. And so th those experiences are moving more and more online. And then you think, OK, well, if, you know, more and more of these experiences are moving online, where are they hosted? Who's who's, you know, uh, like whose land are they going to be on? Well, yeah. that could be your land or it could be a land that you're, you bought and sold. You know what I'm saying? And so, uh, you know, then you think, well, what, but land, that's stupid. Like, why, why would I buy buying virtual land? Well, it just right. comes down to the same reason why you buy physical land, right? A, mm -hmm. it's limited. B, there's a demand. That's it. That's really all you have to know. A, it's limited, right? You know that land's mm -hmm. limited here on, the, on, on our earth, right? You know that there's only X amount of land available. And actually, a lot of times that land is becoming more and more scarce because, uh, you know, the, the, the oceans rising, things happening, uh, land becoming unusable because of it being, you know, tainted in some sort of way. And uh, you know, virtual land has those same characteristics. It is limited. There's no meta metaverses or places where just like, oh, we just have unlimited land. We're just, you know, they understand the value of it being limited and being rare. Uh, and then when there's the demand, which there is now, uh, then it makes for a good investment. Yeah, I think uh, we're talking about it. I think it was Sandbox has like 166,000 parcels. Yep. And uh, Decentraland has around 90,000. Mm -hmm. So the, the question I got after my video was, well, can't they just create more? No, they can't create more because they know about scarcity. And the next question was, well, how about the other thousand metaverses that are coming in? It's mm -hmm. the same thing with cryptocurrency. What about the other 10,000 cryptocurrencies that are out there? Are you really going to invest in number 5,727? Or are you going to invest into something like the top 100? That's kind of how I see things. Right. No. And that's a great way to look at it, too, because, you know, just like you're saying, hey, well, uh, you know, if I'm going to invest in crypto for the first time, I recommend to my viewers, start with Bitcoin, start with the, the, the one that has led the way and then branch off from there once you're comfortable. Same yeah. thing with, uh, you know, looking at metaverses and gaming, start with what has already been, you know, at the top and, you know, you're not going to probably make as much profit, right? Because we all know that the, the big profits are in, in, you know, smaller cap coins or up and coming projects that you can get in on the ground floor. But this yeah. at least gives, gives you some comfortability room, right? You, you've invested in, in a top tier metaverse and you bought land in Decentraland or you bought land in the sandbox. You see yes. how it kind of works. You understand you kind of you, you got skin in the game now. And that that that, uh, you know, incentivizes you to go and learn more. And then that's when you say, OK, well, what else could be a good coin? Like what else is, is you know, something that could work that is going to be long that may have a long term roadmap and, and do really well in, in, the, in this interim or maybe short term just depends. But I think that th that's where you kind of start off is with those blue chip metaverses and then mm -hmm. go from there. Yeah. So I just got into blue chip metaverses a couple of days ago, and uh, now I will be uh, delving into the uh, the degen ones. So we'll see how that all goes. So Stash, this leads us to our next and a couple of our final points. Five years, 10 years. What does this all look like? And it's I know it's extremely hard to say, well, in 10 years, it'll be exactly this. But what do you see things going as far as like P PDE, NFTs, metaverse, all those things? Yeah. Well, I mean, let, let me let me uh, let me consult my magic stash here real quick. Five years. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I mean, I think that you know, in in five years' time, you know, what I really see is uh, m the majority of people really understanding cryptocurrency, even if they're not necessarily using it in their daily lives. But I think that the majority of people it becoming commonplace. Uh, right. Maybe they're, they're, they're not, you know, be, it's not a, a, a still thing that like, hey, I use it every day, like me and you, you know, we're using it every day because we're in this industry. But I think it'll be so commonplace that, you know, people are not going to think like, oh, it, you know, Bitcoin is a scam. I think we'll get to that level within five years uh, for the general populace. Now, when it comes down to people who are a little bit more committed and understand and, and are a little more future thinking, which are people watching this channel, by the way, if you're watching this channel now, you are one of those people. You're a future right. thinking you're committed to 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 uh, you know being a part of this uh, revolution that we're, we're that we're helping to to facilitate. 
So, you know, those people are the ones that are going to be ahead of that five year curve. And in five years, I mean, if you're if you're doing things right and you're you're you have a solid investment strategy and you're hodling the long term, thinking long term, which is a big thing. That's something I always talk about on my channel as well. I'm a long term type of play guy, not a short term trader. Mm -hmm. Then you will be a millionaire. I mean, I mean, without a doubt, without a doubt. I so agree. I think five years time, we're all going to be millionaires. We're all going to have Lambos. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I think that I think that if you're solid with your investing five years time, you definitely can. Uh, but what is the rest of the landscape going to look like? I mean, I think that we're going to continue to see more and more things tokenized. Uh, in mm -hmm. particular, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the gaming sector I think is going to really lead the way over the next five years. We're really we're just starting to see major studios wake up to the potential of NFTs and and you know injecting blockchain technology into their games and, and and there'll be a point where no game will not be doing this just like when there was a point where you couldn't play a game for free you had to buy every game and then yeah. this concept of free to play came about and was like oh wow this is this is totally new and and this is a new model and everyone adopted it and they're like hey if you don't have a free to play model uh with what we're doing now then you're probably not really going to make it you know and so, I mean, there's still some games out there that that may don't necessarily follow that same model, but it just depends on what's going on. So I really do think that most of the gaming industry is going to move that direction. And we're going to see a lot of other industries, too, uh, move that direction as well. Uh, anything that can benefit from incorporating blockchain or NFTs into their into their, uh, you know, workflow and into their their processes. You know, think about if you could reduce your overhead for your business by 20 percent because you can incorporate blockchain or NFTs. I mean, that could be huge for multi-billion dollar businesses. So Facebook's already jumped on board. We've seen large companies uh, already jumping on board and, and, and developing their own solutions for this. So in the next five years, we're going to see most of those things come to fruition. And I do think gaming is going to kind of lead the way. So in five years, uh, we're going to see that become kind of a standard. In 10 years, I think that we're going to see you know a complete, uh, I wouldn't say reversal, but a, but a complete change of the way that we think about uh, value, the way that we think about value. Uh, and right now, most people don't value things digitally as much as they value things physically. But I think in 10 years time, I think that that's going to make a complete flip flop and people are going to value their digital assets and digital lives in a much larger way than people do at this point. And that is going to be the main and 100% driver of our economy. Everything is going to be in a digital format. We're going to be we're going to see uh, most jobs moving into a digital metaverse uh, mm -hmm. that uh, that, you know, people are, are interacting with on a daily basis. And so I, I really do think in 10 years time we're going to see that that major shift. Yeah. And I got to agree. I, the thing that I see is just huge job creation. It'd be like yeah. in the early 90s, mid 90s, if someone came up to you and said, hey, Stash, I need you to do uh, to do a blog post or, or a vlog. I need you to do SEO for me and also do some Facebook ads. Like, what are you talking about? What are you Greek? I don't understand what you're what you're saying. Yeah. Those types of jobs were in, exist. yeah, they didn't exist. And like, I, in in five years, we're gonna see some some jobs that no one even thought of, but become like the most necessary things. I think yeah. that's where I see a lot of the things going as far as that. Then, yeah. Yeah. which which leads me to the last one, and we'll wrap this up. Shay's uh, topics. So this is now we, we, we took out five, 10 years, which is pretty difficult. Did a great job. Let's bring it back. What are some of your top picks? And it could be anything. If we're talking about, if we're talking about gaming currents or, or cryptocurrency, if we're talking about play to earn games, we're talking about metaverses that are just up and coming. What are some of the top picks that you're looking at right now? Yeah, I mean, when it comes to top picks, uh, you know, I'll first of all kind of start off with just some coins, right? Because this is the easiest thing, like I said, to kind of get into. Uh, it's a little more familiar. You're still investing in the, the game or the infrastructure or play to earn kind of elements, but uh, doing it in a way that is not you having, you know, you're not you directly playing the game. So uh, I really am a big, strong believer of Theta. I've been a holder of Theta for a very oh, long yeah. time. Uh, I, I stream on Theta, uh, but you know, on Theta TV. But th their underlying technology of content distribution is uh, <clears throat> really well done, and they already have some pretty good patents on that. Uh, so right. I think that they're definitely going to to be a strong leader uh, here in in the, in the very short term future. So I think Theta is, a, is still a pretty good buy right now. Uh, then you look at the things like we, we talked about earlier, some of these metaverses, Decentraland, Sandbox, so the Mana and Sand Token, both of them have, have exploded here in price over the last you know month or so because of Facebook coming out with their Meta Play. But I think that this is just really, you know, we're just still getting started here. You know, so many people are just barely getting into these things. The demand for these tokens 
are going to continue to go up because more and more people are going to be in these metaverses wanting to use these tokens for things associated with these metaverses. So I think those are big plays there. Uh, Engine Coin is also a big favorite of mine, what they're doing uh, sure, to kind sure. of connect metaverses together and, and, and offer tools for developers. You know, it's, it's essentially they offer a set of tools for developers, which is pretty good. Uh, so definitely one of the one of the better like gaming style coins. Uh, also a big fan of what uh, Wax is doing. So if you guys know the Wax blockchain, very NFT focused. Uh, they are the second largest NFT chain behind Ethereum uh, when it comes wow. to volume. So a lot of people don't even realize that they they yeah. they're just out there talking about Solana and Ethereum and Wax is is it has more buyers on Wax per day than than OpenSea does. Uh, yeah, and so, and. And, and super cheap to use, right? I mean, there's no there's yeah. no crazy gas fees. Like, I, I remember you talking about that. I'm like, I like that for sure. Yeah, okay. yeah, no gas fees, uh, very little. You know, you, you have like renewable resources, essentially. So you stake your resources and you can always redeem it if you want. So it's not like you're losing gas, you know? Uh, and, and so, uh, nice. yes. So so Wax is a really great NFT, uh, you know, platform, which I, I think is incredibly undervalued. Then you look at some other places like uh, Gala Games as a studio is really, I, I also think, pretty undervalued. They're doing some really great games, and it's a, an actual you know blockchain gaming studio. Uh, and so they, they have a bunch of titles that they've been working on. They're getting ready to come out with. Um, another favorite is Ultra, Ultra IO, UOS. Uh, it is like the Steam competitor for blockchain, uh, you know, and it's a, essentially a way to uh, buy and sell games. Uh, actual, so you, you right now you buy a game on Steam, you own the game, but you can never sell it. Like, that's it. You've bought it. That's it. You can't, you know, back in the day, we, we could, t you know, you bought your game at, at, at uh, you know, GameStop. You could go resell yeah. it there like, after you're done. And maybe you get, you know, 20 bucks out of you paid 50, you get 20 bucks back. And you're like, hey, okay, cool. Yeah. Someone else can yeah. buy that used game now, you know, and, but you can't do that with, uh, with, um, the, you know, games on Steam. So Ultra is kind of solving that problem. Um, and, and it's Ultra. pretty cool. Ultra. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Well, great. Uh, so, well, look, yes, yeah, so a couple of big picks. I mean, I could keep going on with some really great stuff, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, with, with games and things like that, you know, I already mentioned some of the games I'm, 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 you know, pretty bullish on. I think that are our AAA experiences that are out now, but some of the ones that are coming soon are like Alluvium, uh, Star yes. Atlas. Both yes. those are big AAA games that are going to be coming here, and you know, investment, little investments in them now, or the tokens underlying, are also uh, I think a pretty good pick too. Star Atlas is that the one that's built on Solana, or is that another one I'm thinking of? Yep, Star Atlas. Yep, Solana. pretty good, pretty good TPS. Okay, well, Stash, I think you've said it all. You said it all today. A lot of good. Got to get it all in there. <laughs> and and as a reminder, you guys can find uh, Crypto Stash at his uh, YouTube site. You can also find him on Theta. Streams over there. I believe he does a, a couple of uh, live streams as well. And that is it for today. So, look, uh, Stash. Any last words of wisdom? We are coming into the uh, the bull run. End of the bull run. Maybe the end of the bull run. Any. Uh, any wise words for people out there investing in crypto? Yeah, I mean, my wise words are just think long term. Uh, always have a plan. You know, whether your 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 plan is short term or long term, have a plan. Uh, you know, try and stick to it. And uh, find me wherever you like uh, following crypto stuff. I'm at Crypto Stash everywhere. Sounds good. All right, I'll put all the links in the description below. But that's it for today. If you liked the video, found some value, give it a uh, thumbs up, give it a like, consider subscribing. A lot of things are coming up fast and furious. And that's it. So thanks so much for watching. We appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one.